Hello everyone, my name is Beckett and welcome back to the channel. And today in Division 2, we are going to be going over the Hollywood Global event going on this week. We're about two or three days in and this is a perfect time to do it. We usually don't want to do it early, so I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks, what bill you should be using, where you should go so you can get all these activities done within two or three hours or even sooner if you're running with a group. You could probably finish this within an hour. The longest part is completing the missions for the challenge and we're gonna go over that but before we get started if you enjoy the content hit that subscribe and if this video helped you out smash that like button we are growing into a nice little division 2 channel now let's get into how this Hollywood global event works so all of the enemies in the game except for the expedition conflict dark zone and raids will be be affected with a shield and you'll see it it's like this orange little shield and usually Isaac will be like oh hostile shield down or hostile shield up you, you'll notice it it's very easy to detect and to destroy these shields we can do it with explosives we can do it with skills status effects skills EMPs meaning if you're running a run and gun build you can use your EMP pulse pop it and then just nuke everything. But we are unable to attack these people with regular weapons until the shields are down. So it doesn't matter how powerful your gun is, every bullet is gonna be useless. Other guns that have dots on them like pestilence and stuff will still work and still cause damage, which is a good thing. And you may want to have it on you if you have farmed it out. Now let's get into the grouping. So whoever the group leader is, if they have it activated, it will be activated for the entire party. So if you're running with buddies and you aren't the leader make sure they have it activated it's pretty easy to notice you won't see any orange guys running around same thing goes with matchmaking you can just hop into random missions i was running on hard and challenging challenging was a little rough but hard and challenging is okay you'll notice everybody is struggling because you have to do so much damage to break those shields and when you get into the harder missions where you got to go kill rikers and i made a mistake and did wall street and those last three bosses took forever to take down. Now let's hop into the challenges. So as you can see, there is four days of challenges and it runs for the whole week. Ideally, you would probably want to start this like Saturday morning when the fourth day is complete or Friday night to be able to get this done as quick as possible because you're gonna be able to do all four days at once. You don't need to do day by day, but I understand if you're time constrained and you can only play like an hour or two at a time, so you might just have to do day by day. But the fastest and most efficient way to get all these challenges done, at least all the odd and end ones, like damage shielded hostiles with a thrown grenade or hit shielded hostiles with a specialized weapon that take a long time and if you were doing it a regular way, you would have to go into regular missions or in control points, and it's going to take a while, but we're gonna do it the fast way and efficient way, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So ideally, we started this on Friday or Saturday morning, so what we're gonna wanna do first is go crank out the missions. We have to do an invaded challenging one, and I believe just a regular challenging one. Why we're waiting till Saturday is because it's asking you to do a hard one, and then a hard invaded one. So if we can just wait till the end of the week and just do one and then it be accounted for all those challenges, we'll get eight or 10 points and we'll have a bunch of rewards waiting for us. Now, if you are struggling getting through these missions with your regular build, I would suggest using an Eclipse Protocol build with a Vile Mass and Pestilence. That's what I was using. I'll be doing a full build video on that tomorrow if you want to check that out. It's not that complicated, but we are just basically going to be using the Chem Launcher to light everything on fire, and it pretty much makes the shields not even a thing. I would just pop one, light the whole room on fire, and I would pull out the pestilence when I needed to take care of a boss, but it really wasn't an issue, and you couldn't even really tell that there were modifiers going. Now that we got our missions done, now we need to do all the odd and end stuff, all the crazy stuff that will take a long time if we're doing it normally, like if we were doing it through checkpoints or through regular missions, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna head to the Federal Emergency Bunker. Now we're still gonna be using our Eclipse Protocol, build we're just going to be switching out a skill for whatever we need to do so if we need to do the explosive skills attack a shielded target we're going to pull out a secret mine and we're still going to use our cam launcher on the side if we need to get in trouble and we're just going to do that and once we kill about five or six enemies we're going to die and rinse and repeat and we're going to keep doing this until we're finished and you can finish almost all of them within 
30 minutes. Normally we would have to do this on the open world activities, missions, and it would take a long time. You might have to spend the whole day just to get all these separate things done, but this way we're going to be able to get this done very quickly because we can respawn and they're always going to be there. We'll have full grenades, we'll have full skills. Now the rewards in these global events are quite amazing if you get lucky and that's why I always do them and I usually only do it up to about tier six. I really don't care about the collectibles. Some of the arm patches are cool but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter. It does not affect my gameplay so it's always fun to come and do these and hopefully I get lucky and get something nice out of my name cash, my season cash. Out of the season cash you'll get whatever was on the season pass so it might be bellstone armory it might be hunter's fury and they are rolling pretty high i i got a god roll hunter's fury i think holster or something i was excited about it it was like 0.8 percent weapon damage but whatever so we get the crafting materials the name cache is amazing because we can get any named item in the game that isn't locked behind a quest so even if it drops from the dz and there are certain weapons that drop from the dz and gear pieces that are amazing and must have in any arsenal you also get another season cash and exotic cash and if you like the cool shades you can put on your backpack that's awesome i would love if we could wear some of these things like i said before the upper mass all that stuff they're very cool i like doing the global events it's kind of just mixes it up breaks up the monotony in the game from just farming god rolls in certain areas now that's all i got for you guys for the hollywood global event i hope this helped out if it did hit that like button and i have a build video on the whole eclipse protocol so you can check that out it does huge dot damage and it is quite fun during this activity because as soon as that pops off everything goes wild like everything starts melting you get the explosive damage from the modifier event plus all your ticks it's quite ridiculous.